Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us uh, for this new report, Recreation Funding in America, Current Results and Future Insights. ORR is the nation's leading coalition of outdoor recreation associations, representing over 110,000 businesses and the broad spectrum of outdoor recreation activities. Data released last year by the Department of Commerce shows that we contribute over $1.1 trillion to the United States economy and 5 million American jobs comprising 2.2% of the United States GDP and 3.2% of all US employees. At a time when we're growing two and a half times faster than the US economy as a whole, leading companies and associations from across the industry's top segments determined that it's time to think long-term, big picture, and proactively to ensure that thriving economies that we support are here to support future generations and future communities. What we know to be true is that healthy recreation economies contribute to healthy people, jobs, communities, and our natural resources. We also know that healthy public lands and waters are the backbone of this critical economic sector and that funding for these places is essential today and into the future. Momentarily, Rob will share some high level data with you for this first of its kind report, quantifying federal expenditures on outdoor recreation and future projections of what these could look like in the next 10 and 20 years. There are many stats that stand out from this incredible report, but one that I hope sticks with you is that outdoor recreation contributes 2.2% to US GDP, yet only receives a 16th of a percent of federal funding, a nearly 14 times difference in scale. This small investment for a major economic output suggests a need for substantial increase in federal funding for outdoor recreation. Also core to what we will be hearing today is that Increases in federal outdoor recreation spending lag significantly behind increases in overall federal spending. So in recreation in the past 20 years, the federal budget has only grown 22%, but the overall federal budget has grown 76%. Finally, the majority of federal outdoor recreation spending comes from sources outside of general revenue that's outside of the appropriations process which means that trends and forces including inflation, energy transitions, participation in excise taxes, and extreme weather and climate events all stand to impact recreation spending over the decades to come, maybe even more than our projections would showcase today. I'm honored to be joined by Rob Southwick, president of Southwick Associates, and for 25 years, you've probably seen and tracked his data. He's really been at the forefront of natural resource uh, data projections and recreation business trends. We're also thrilled to have the new executive director of the Outdoor Foundation, Les Duncan. Les was previously CEO of the Greening Youth Foundation and throughout his career has worked to lead and support coalitions and businesses to develop innovative programs addressing issues at the intersection of outdoor recreation, environmental justice, and health. A reminder that you can find our executive summary on the ORR website and that we'll leave time for Q&A at the end, so please start putting your questions in the queue as they come up. Closed captioning is also available. I'd like to thank the thought leaders at KOA and Revelist, Winnebago Industries and Brunswick for making this report possible. And I'm really excited to hand it over to Rob to share the report with you. Great, thank you, Jess. I appreciate that. Um, just wanna start here, with the first slide about the purpose of the project. And that was twofold. The first thing we wanted to do was to document how much is invested annually by the federal budget in outdoor recreation. And then second, by looking at trends in recent years and using projections from various sources, try to get an idea of what's to come down the road. Um, this work was done using multiple sources. We used everything from um, actually very detailed budget data from the Office of Management and Budget and US Treasury. We reviewed these budgets line item by line item. The estimates we use to project future trends come from the reliable sources that we trust, such as the Federal Reserve when it comes to inflation. Um, the data sources that we looked at were many. We looked at all of the major land agencies. Go ahead and hit the next slide, please. Uh, we looked at the, the top land agencies that you associate typically with outdoor recreation, such as interior and agriculture. But we also found programs that benefit outdoor recreation within other agencies, such as EPA and the Federal Highway Administration. When we looked at expenditures, there were expenditures that were for the direct purpose of outdoor recreation, such as you know, trails, development, maintenance, lodging, um, so forth. 
um, campsites, but also we looked at indirect spending when we could tie it directly to outdoor recreation as benefiting um, in one way or other, such as, for example, USDA's Conservation Reserve Program, which is meant to help support agriculture, but in the course of doing so, it does provide high quality outdoor recreation opportunities for Americans. And other indirect spending, such as utilities and staffing that's required in order to provide the outdoor infrastructure upon which outdoor recreation depends. The details of what we did will be in the technical report that will be available in about a week's time. Um, so I don't wanna kill your time here with, with the gory details on how we did the research, but it was a very thorough line by line review of federal budgets. Um, instead now, I'd like to go ahead and jump into the results, give you a little background here. So overall, we measured about $9.4 billion being invested directly into and indirectly into outdoor recreation annually from the federal budget. This not, it's not necessarily a large number. Um, this amount is equivalent to just over 1% of federal spending annually on Medicare, um, but it's still a significant number. But as Jen had um, alluded to in the beginning here in her opening comments, the trends is really where the story lies. Uh, the federal budget, the overall total federal budget in the last 20 years has increased 76%. During that time, the number of people participating in outdoor recreation, which is numbers that come courtesy of the Outdoor Foundation, um, has increased 45%. However, we only measured a 22% increase in spending on outdoor recreation within the federal budget. So compared to 20 years ago, only half the amount of money is going in per head or per user as it um, was in the past. And that is causing some problems, which we'll come to in just a moment. This pie chart shows where the funds come from that are then spent on outdoor recreation by the federal budget. You can see here that about half of the funds come from the general revenue, from general tax dollars. About 20%, roughly $2 billion, comes from fossil fuels. That's either from the fees that um, are received by the federal government from, from the extraction or production of fossil fuels as uh, oil and gas production offshore, onshore. And then um, also there's a portion of fuel taxes that are dedicated to outdoor recreation. Another source is the excise taxes. Those are the excise taxes um, paid on sport fishing equipment, firearms, ammunition, archery equipment that are dedicated back to fish and wildlife related outdoor recreation and other types of excise taxes. And then the fees paid by participants directly, whether it's access fee to a national park or a camp fee, or could be um, Corps of Engineers, boat ramps and so forth. So half the funds come from general tax dollars, but the other half come from dedicated sources. All of these sources do have some risk and issues going forward that we need to consider. Um, to go through some of the major items here, the first one's inflation. Um, right now, the Federal Reserve is projecting about a 2.8% inflation rate over the next 10 to 20 years. Um, that means that to maintain the status quo spending, the today's level of spending, if we adjust for inflation in the next 24, 20, excuse me, next 20 years, we will need 74% um, greater dollars just to maintain status quo to address for inflation. Number two, society is shifting towards alternative energy sources. And at some point, the extraction of oil and gas will drop and the consumption will decline. Where will the funds come from to replace those we receive now from these sources? Number three, we need to make sure people still continue to participate in the outdoors. Um, as mentioned before, their access fees to public recreation areas and their excise taxes are critical funding sources and a major funding source for several areas of our recreational activities. And number four, we saw that stagnant appropriations, how the growth in outdoor spending has been not keeping up with the growth in the overall federal budget and not keeping up with the rate of Americans participating in outdoor recreation. That causes a problem that we see here on this next slide the human use impacts. When people use our outdoor infrastructure, it does cause wear and tear. Um, you know, from campgrounds to, you mentioned lodges, uh, all different sources you can look at. And currently in 2022, 
The blue chart, the blue line you see down there is the actual amount spent, the federal budget, 9.4 billion total for all types of recreational activities. The orange is the current backlog on maintenance of our outdoor infrastructure. So currently the backlog is twice as large as the total annual spending as a gap of about $16 billion. If we just draw that trend out on the growth in the backlog from the recent years and draw that forward, and if we draw forward the amount the federal, the 9.4 billion adjusted for inflation going forward, we can see if nothing is done about this backlog, it's going to increase to $34 billion in the next 20 years. It's time to start paying attention to this issue now because it's becoming more and more costly for us to keep up with this demand. And that takes me to the final slide and some key points I would like to share with you. We need to elevate awareness of the importance of outdoor recreation to, to the economy. And that means it's, it's importance to all Americans, including those who do not participate in the outdoors. As Jess had, had explained and shared, the US BEA has, has reported that the outdoor rec economy contributes over 1.1 trillion in total economic activity in the United States, and that were 2.2% of the GDP. The chart here shows why that is significant. We are a major sector in the U.S. economy. We are twice as large as other very well-known um, and very frequently discussed and very important industries. We are larger. Too often people see outdoor recreation as what people do when the workday is over. That is playtime. And it is. But people spend significant amounts of money to get out and recreate, to play, to relax, to escape. And that supports many, many jobs, 3.3% of U.S. employment. So we need to help people understand the importance of outdoor recreation to all Americans, not just those who participate. Currently, however, even though we represent 2.2% of the economy, less than two tenths of 1% of the federal budget is spent on outdoor recreation. So to equate those two numbers, the federal spending outdoor recreation would have to increase by a factor of 14, significant numbers. So I appreciate your time. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Les to share more. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks so much, Rob. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Jessica and Outdoor Recreation Roundtable for having me on board. Um, as was previously introduced, my name is Les Duncan. I serve as the Executive Director of the Outdoor Foundation, the philanthropic arm of the outdoor industry really dedicated to increasing outdoor participation and equitable access to outdoor recreation uh, through both community investment as well as groundbreaking research, which we'll uh, share a bit of uh, today. Uh, as a brief overview of our community investments, Outdoor Foundation's Thrive Outside initiative invests deeply in community-driven collective impact approaches in 13 communities across the country. And these 13 communities in 2023 helped to connect over 95,000 children, youth, and families to transformative experiences in the outdoors. Um, it's been a movement that has expanded youth, family outdoor programming, cultivated uh, and innovative cross-sector program partnerships in education and healthcare, um, and has developed community uh, gear libraries and advanced state and community outdoor equity funds. Um, the other critical function that we provide at the Outdoor Foundation is providing essential outdoor participation data uh, that helps to guide our industry uh, and our broader outdoor ecosystem, including the public sector, uh, movement builders, nonprofit organizations, and entities that are working to increase and expand equitable access to outdoor recreation. Uh, for over 15 years, the Outdoor Foundation, in partnership with Outdoor Industry Association, has published the Outdoor Participation Trends Report, the most trusted and comprehensive source of insights and narratives around who's doing what, when, and how outdoors. Um, and so Jessica has invited me on this morning to share a little bit about uh, some of the outdoor participation trends we've been seeing um, and the brief uh, and and uh, and to to preview some of the 2024 data highlights that we'll be fully publishing uh, in our report on June 18th. Uh, next slide, please. 
So some of the uh, some of the trends that we've been seeing over uh, over the past seventeen years, um, and in particular over uh, this past year, so we continue to see growth um, in outdoor participation. And in twenty twenty three, we grew another four point one percent in outdoor participation to a record one hundred and seventy five point eight million uh, outdoor participants. Um, which is the equivalent of about 57.3% of all Americans age six and older. Um, uh, kind of layered in this data as well, um, and as you'll see in the report that will be published in a few weeks, for the first time ever, more than half of American women are participating in outdoor recreation. Uh, about 51.9% of all American women are participating in outdoor recreation. Um, we also recognize diversity in outdoor participation in other ways as well. Members of the LGBTQ plus community continue to be the most active adult cohort in outdoor participation with rates over 60%. Um, participants also became more racially and ethnically diverse, um, which I'll share a little bit uh, a little bit in the next slide as well. However, um, still not yet on par uh, with the demographics of, of the US. And then also layered in this data, actually, if we could go back one, uh, uh, go back a slide. Also layered in in this data um, is uh, some interesting trends that we're seeing between core um, and casual participants. Um, one of the things that we've been seeing year uh, year after year over the past five years um, is that we're on a long decline in core participants, or as we define it, participants who engage in outdoor recreation 51 times or less uh, per year, or in each particular outdoor recreation activity, uh, that number varies. But uh, ag in total, we've seen a decline in core uh, outdoor participants. However, we've also seen an, a significant increase in casual participants. And these casual uh, new participants are even more diverse they behave differently in the outdoor market. They behave differently in the outdoors as well um, and engage, uh, engage differently in outdoor recreation, um, which really, as we think about the, 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 uh, the new outdoor consumer, the new outdoor enthusiast, um, should really give us pause in some of the data that Rob shared um, and that Jessica shared. Uh, and some of the uh, and some of and uh, really look critically at the needs uh, for infrastructure uh, moving forward. Next slide. As I mentioned before, uh, our new outdoor participants uh, are more diverse uh, than uh, than ever before. Uh, we see that amongst African Americans, Asian Pacific Islanders, and Hispanics. If if you look at uh, the data uh, on in, in each of these bar graphs, the data on the left uh, show our total our uh, new participants. The data on the right shows our total outdoor participant uh, uh, base. And in each of those bar uh, in each of those bar graphs, uh, we see that new outdoor participants um, are significantly more diverse. Uh, and then in the bar graph, uh, most relevant to us at the Outdoor Foundation really focused on engaging children and youth in outdoor recreation. Um, we also see uh, uh, we also see uh, trending increases amongst youth participation as well. Uh, next slide. So really, what does this mean to this over this overarching conversation? As Rob outlined, uh, you know, federal spending that benefits outdoor recreation has increased 22%, only 22% over the last 20 years. Um, and in comparison, the overall uh, federal budget for all purposes has increased 76% in the last two decades. We know um, that this spending has not kept up with increasing demand. Um, and year over year, as we see, and especially since uh, the pandemic, as we see increasing demand, increasing participation in the outdoors, um, we recognize that, that we'll need significantly more increases um, in investment uh, in outdoor recreation uh, facilities, maintenance, um, and, and uh, access programming as well. So I'll pause there and turn it, uh, turn it back over to Jessica. And I think uh, from here, we'll engage a little bit more in dialogue and Q&A. 
you, Rob, um, data and putting numbers to um, important issues for our industry and less for your great new insight uh, and participation and the participation side of the equation here, which is really important as we're looking at projections into the future. The $34 billion that Rob spoke about um, is what this industry, uh, an industry that is core to so much of what makes this country great and can make it better, could be facing. And so it's so important that we share this data with others. So please be sure to go ahead and share this with policymakers and other stakeholders who might be interested. We now know how important it is that federal spending keeps up uh, with all of these changes in the demand. As more people get outside, inflation continues to rise, climate-induced events cost more for infrastructure and ecosystem sustainability, um, and that our energy systems are changing. And there's a real desire to figure out how we can work with new um, structures around the energy industry to make sure that money go into conservation and recreation. We also know after this report that a significant portion of outdoor recreation funding comes from sources outside of federal revenue and that moving forward, our members or ours members and the businesses that they represent will show up for this conversation, will show up with consolidated asks and drive outcomes, hopefully like a White House commission on the 21st century outdoor recreation funding and demand solutions of policymakers for an industry that contributes nearly 14 times uh, more to the GDP than we get from federal spending. We'll also have to lean in as a private sector. It is our duty to educate consumers and engage consumers in our projected shortfalls that we discussed today and in other recreation funding mechanisms. We can create coordinated campaigns and really increase the support of our consumers for recreation and conservation um, and be sure that they're part of the discussion um, on solving this growing funding gap that we are looking at today. Uh, lastly, you know, it's really important that, that we understand this adequate investment and in certainty, just like any other industry needs. And that's really what this data showed us today is what we need to sustain ourselves and what we need to start thinking about into the future. But smart policy, like passing the Explore Act, which has no cost, can also make these dollars go farther with the modernized systems and updated recreation planning. After passing the House a couple of weeks ago, by unanimous consent, we implore the U.S. Senate to pass the Explore Act in the next month and really allow our industry to do what we do best, which is supporting healthy people, places, economies, and the planet. Our hope is that what you heard today and the data we shared is just the beginning of this conversation. The data is truly eye-opening and shows that there's forward-thinking legacy work to be done on behalf of American outdoor businesses, American workers, rural communities, and the future of America's outdoor recreation legacy. So we thank you for joining us and uh, we'll attempt to answer a couple questions in the chat. Um, I think the first one uh, we've answered, but I'd love to hand one over to you, Les, if there's a site or a, a quick description of how you define outdoor participation. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a that's a great question, especially especially as we talk about increasing diversity in outdoor and outdoor recreation. We know that there are numerous ways that people are getting outdoors, that people are um, experiencing the outdoors. For the purpose of this report, um, we we defined outdoor recreation as any leisure or recreational activities that take place in natural environments or outdoor settings. Um, and we note uh, very specifically in this report um, that this more narrowly focuses um, on contemporarily defined and mostly human powered and outdoor activities and is not exhaustive up to the diverse ways um, that people recreate in the outdoors. Um, so it includes uh, 54 pr uh, particular outdoor uh, activities kind of contemporarily defined. Awesome. And I think that goes to this question less, um, but what are the needs of casual outdoor participants and what kind of outdoor recreation opportunities are they looking for? Absolutely. So the casual outdoor participant is is engaging in outdoor recreation uh, less frequently, but they are engaging very much in community. Um, some of the things that they're looking for uh, or some of the activities that they're engaged in include hiking, bird watching, activities that require lower technical skill, uh, but that allow for that, that community building. And so some of the things that casual participants are really um, looking for are opportunities to engage and to connect whether it be with community uh, community groups or associations, um, and they're looking uh, they're they're uh, looking to, to enjoy the outdoors uh, rather than to deepen skill. 
the opportunity there though, um, especially for outdoor brands and retailers um, are to provide gateway opportunities for these casual participants to increase their learning, increase their, their understanding, to be able to walk in to, for example, a retail store um, and deepen their knowledge on, on uh, technical gear or equipment uh, to be able to further their outdoor experience. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and Rob, I, I think this is for uh, you and I can tackle, but um, there's a question about state specific data and how important that is to sell to especially representatives um, and their districts. Uh, we do have state specific data for the BEA data that we shared at the beginning, the 1.1 trillion, um, the 5 million jobs. That data is wonderful. It drills down into every state in the country and takes a really robust look at their recreation economy. What we were looking at here is really federal spending um, coming from Congress and flowing to the state, some of it. So Rob, is that correct? Or is there a way that we could go deeper in the future with this data? There, there are ways it could be done in the future. That information is not available right now, but I do strongly agree the, the BEA data at the state level um, does make a very compelling and very defensible case about the importance of outdoor recreation at the state level. That's the best source we could use right now. Great. And then one more question, Rob, I think for you that on the gap between funding and deferred maintenance, um, was any analysis done on how the deferred maintenance is estimated to be brought down from the legislation passed? I think that's LRF, um, Legacy Restoration Fund, um, and used by National Park Service and Forest Service for bringing that down, or how did that contribute to your analysis? We do not have the details of how that was considered in the, within each agency. We just have the total numbers that are reported by each agency out through OMB and other sources. And I think, I think the question was also just getting at the Legacy Restoration Fund, if that funding was applied to this um, analysis, the, the uh, billions of dollars we got a few years ago. All fundings that were applied actually appropriated and spent through 2022 were included. Anything after right. that were not. So um, that maintenance backlog funding was applied here. And I think that's an important note because we're actually looking at um, such an in increasing expenditure um, that we need in order to get that maintenance backlog down and fund our other recreation areas. And that includes the big investment that has been made. Um, last question I think we can take and then we'll be at time. And it's a great last question. Um, would you describe how this data can be used to advocate for more federal funding? Is there a role for local communities? I think local communities are the reason why this is so important. Um, they are uh, the, the places where the recreation economy can really drive jobs and drive quality of life. And so what we're so excited about is having this data for the first time to showcase what federal spending is actually going into recreation right now and where we're seeing a huge gap in the future if we don't make some you know, concerted effort and changes. And so that's the exact right question. We're really excited at ORR to be working on the solutions with our key members and key businesses. And we'd love to get back to all of you in the coming months with our proposals, both on recreation spending, because that is really what this report is about, is keeping up with just the adequate level of spending we need to maintain a robust recreation economy and all of the other ways um, that members of Congress and local communities can help support recreation in their areas. And so stay tuned, um, join our website to uh, see more and the technical report being released Friday. And we really look forward to following up with you on all of these exciting efforts and engaging you in your communities in the future. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Rob and Les. Thank you.